Hello everyone on the internet that clicked onto my video. My name's Cassie, welcome to my channel. So for my first video ever, I'm gonna show you how to do a professional eye makeup look using the new Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 palette. So a lot of people would look at this palette and think, okay, you're gonna make a professional eye look with this? Like, look at all these red colors, look at this glitter, what are you crazy? Like, that's not professional. But honestly, that is why I created this channel because I work in the professional field, but I also simultaneously love makeup. I honestly just want to spread the message that you can wear makeup. You could express yourself in any way you want and that's not going to take away from your intellect. I want people to break down what they think of when they hear professional look. I don't think that we should be drawing the line because you work in a professional field or really any field. Whatever you're doing, it's an artistry. I don't think that you should cut yourself off from ever gravitating towards something as beautiful as this. This is beautiful and should go on your eyeballs whether or not you're going out or working. Okay, so I am done rambling. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick intro as to why I created this channel. And if you want to keep watching the actual tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and we will get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is prime my eyelids with Max Painterly Paint Pot. It's the oldest trick in the book. Let's be real. I'm using my clean finger to apply this to my eyelid. And the purpose of this is to, you know, put a tacky base on your eye so that your eyeshadows can blend better. You don't want all of the oils on your eyelids to interfere with the eyeshadow product and break it down and make it patchy. And now we're going to get into the beautiful Jaclyn Hill palette. Honestly, this is the second time I'm using it, so I truly have no idea what I'm going to do. But again, this is something that I genuinely 100% would wear to my job. So I'm first gonna go in with a Morphe M4 441 brush, but you have to really understand what your eye shape is. Look in the mirror. Do you have hooded eyes? This brush might be too big for your first transition shade. Maybe you need a bigger one. Maybe you need a smaller one if your eyelids are smaller than mine. Makeup is so different to each person, so I would just urge you to keep that in mind. So the first shade I'm going to take is... Let's do Grateful right here. This is going to be my first shade. It looks like it might be a little... <laughs> darker than I anticipated, but here we go. And I'm just going to apply this first to the outer portion of my eye because, hi, this is pigmented, uh, so I don't wanna just drag it around everywhere. But, you know, this is supposed to act as my transition shade, which means when you put other colors on after this, this is supposed to help blend it in, you know, arguably you're gonna go for sort of a gradient. I don't like to put too much color on the inside, just enough to blend everything out. And I sort of like the pulled out wing type look, so I typically drag mine out on the outer corner. Okay. So now that I have the transition shade on, I'm going to go in with a Morphe X Jaclyn Hill brush. This is JH33. I just chose this one because it's smaller. I'm gonna go in my crease now, which is why I'm picking a brush that is more densely packed. So the next shade that I'm gonna go into is something darker, because again, we wanna create depth. We want to en enhance the outer corner. So I'm going to choose... Why don't I just choose this shade called Next, because that seems appropriate. So I'm taking this shade here called Next. And now for this eyeshadow, I'm gonna focus it mostly on the outer corner first. And I kind of like raise my eyebrows so that I can sort of see exactly where I'm placing it. And I'm sort of just packing this in, you know, not just bringing it around everywhere like a crazy person. And then once you feel like you have it where you want it, then you can go ahead and start blending. And again, I'm going for this wing out here, so I'm being mindful to sort of drag it up and out. And again, I'm gonna drag it in when there's like nothing left on my brush that is. Thank you. 
Okay, now I'm gonna go back into the first shade we grabbed, Grateful, just a little bit to diffuse that color we just placed out. Focusing more at the top above the crease, just again to create a gradient, diffuse that sort of red plum color we just placed. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the darkest color that I'm gonna use on my outer corner with this Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH39 pencil brush. I'm gonna grab the color Crazy, this deep plum color. And I like this brush for my eyes because it's so tiny and packed. I can get it right where I want it. I can have more control over my blend after I place it precisely with this. So let's do it. And I'm really just deepening up the outer, outer corner here. I don't want this to go everywhere. That would defeat the whole point. Again, flicking it out for my wing shape. And then I'm gonna go back in with that JH33 that I was using for the second shade with nothing on it, but just to blend this in with that crease color. And just be very careful because, you know, the whole point of using that small packer brush was to be precise in your placement. So if you just start circling away, it's gonna go everywhere, which you don't want. The point of blending this is to create seamless transitions between each shade. It's not to move the product really far at all. It's just to blend it out. Now I'm going to put a metallic shade that has, I think, sort of like micro glitter in it, which is just so pretty. So I am going to take on a flat shader brush. I'm gonna take Drama Queen up here. I'm gonna get a lot of that on my brush because I just like the glitter. Okay, so once I have a bunch of that on my brush, I'm gonna take my setting spray and just spritz it because this just makes them pop. Like, yeah, you can apply them without it as everyone always says all the time, but I like using setting spray. It's just a preference thing, who cares? If you like it more subtle, don't use it. If you like it more dramatic, use it. The end. And then I'm gonna apply this on the inner corner up to where that sort of dark color starts on the outside. It's so beautiful. Yes, please, I love these shadows. Are you kidding? That's pretty. I might even use my finger actually just to build up that shine. Although if you're packing it on with your finger, just be mindful that if you go too ham, it might look textured. It might bring out, you know, wrinkles in your eyelid. It makes it look chunky, not very smooth and pretty. So don't go too crazy, but yeah, that's so pretty. Okay, so now that I have the Drama Queen glitter on my eye, I'm gonna go back in again to that first shade, Grateful, just a little bit to sort of, again, blend everything together, kick off some of the glitter that got a little bit too high and just make this look cohesive. I don't know why my outer corner is giving me a little bit of trouble today, but what are you gonna do? Okay, so the last step I'm gonna do for the eyeshadow right now is I'm going to take this really pretty white opalescent shimmer shade. It's called I'm In It here on my finger a little bit just to give sort of a highlight in the middle of your lid. So just dab, 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 dab. Draw some light to the middle of your eye and it just gives everything a little bit more dimension than just having it be a flat glitter shadow over the whole lid. So now, since I didn't do my foundation or face makeup first, I'm going to clean up the outer corner with makeup remover and a Q-tip. I'm just going to sort of pull my skin a little bit and drag this just to clean it up and make it sharp. 
Are you kidding? That sharp. And then I take the dry side just because this makeup remover is a bit oily, so I don't want it going everywhere. So you see how sharp this is as compared to this side where it's sort of coming a little farther down past where I would like it. I just kind of want to clean it up, sharpen it up like this side. Okay, so now I'm going to do a wing liner. So it's a little tricky on me because again, my eyes are hooded. So if I were to close my eyes and just draw like a dramatic wing liner and then I were to open my eyes, a lot of it would be hidden in my crease. So I kind of have to do baby wings, but you know, gotta work with what you got. So I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild Mega Liner in black. That was anticlimactic. Sometimes they have different names, okay, don't judge me. So I've been using this, I'm not even kidding, since high school. They changed the, the wand and the formula over the years, but it's still the one that I always use. I think it's $2.99, so that works for me. I just like to make sure I wipe off the excess because it pulls up a lot of product when you first take it out. All right, so I'm actually gonna pull my mirror closer to me. And I think the biggest trick, because you know, you can watch videos of someone describing like the, the outline of how to do it. You start, you know, with the line, draw a triangle down, connect it, all that good stuff. But really, I feel like the most important tip is to not put a lot of pressure. Just be mindful of how much pressure you're applying because at least with the felt tip, if I were to go in with a heavy hand, it's gonna bleed everywhere. It's not gonna go exactly where I want it. So with a light hand, I'm going to go in and I start at the bottom corner of my eye and flick it up. And because I had that clean edge of the eyeshadow, I'm sort of just following that line. And then and then I just drag a line down to create a triangle. Again, making sure that for me, it's underneath where my skin creases. And then I just fill in that triangle I just created. So, I'm gonna try and get as close to my lash line as possible so that when I open my eyes, it doesn't take over. Like the black eyeliner doesn't take up my entire eye space. I can still see the eyeshadow I put on. So my goal is always to stick as close to the lash line as possible. If you don't have hooded eyes, then you can make it a thick band, dramatic wing, and your eyeshadow will still show, which is nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my face makeup, but I'm gonna go ahead and speed it through because it really was about the eye look for this video. So let's go.
done with the face. And now we're going to move on to the lower lash line. And honestly, what I normally do, unless I'm doing a crazy pop of color or something, is I'll just mimic what I did on the upper eyelid. So I'm gonna take this smudger brush, and as you can tell, it's again, densely packed, straight line, so you can get really close to your lash line. And I'm gonna take that darkest color that we used, which I don't actually think I said the name of it, which it's called crazy. And again, tap off the excess, and then I'm going to go as close to my lash line as possible. Pack it on, sort of pressing, and then wiggling. And I'm not gonna go all the way in, but I'm gonna go far, pretty far into the inner corner. Okay, now I'm gonna use this Morphe Jaclyn JH40 brush to smoke out that plum color. So you're gonna use a lighter color to diffuse that dark color, bring it down a little bit, uh, smoke it out. And I like looking up, just kind of connecting the top to the bottom. Now I'm going to highlight the brow bone as well as the inner corner. And I usually like using my cheek highlighter to do this just so the look is cohesive because I feel like Cookie is a very unique highlighter. So anytime I use Cookie, which is this highlighter shade that I used in this Benefit palette, I like using that on my brow bone as well. And I, again, am going to spray with my setting spray and place on the brow bone. Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? That's intense. And again, on the inner corner as well. And I like keeping the inner corner highlight pretty close to my corner. I don't like dragging it out a lot. And sometimes I'll pull it up and blend it in whatever eyeshadow I'm wearing. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to that first brush I was using with the color Grateful. I'm not gonna put anything else on it, but I, you know, this is kind of a little crazy right now. So I'm just gonna lightly blend it in to that transition color that we first placed. Now I'm going to do my brows and I'm using Urban Decay Double Down Brow Powder and I just use the brush it comes with, honestly. So I'm not the best at my brows, but I just kind of create the general shape that I'm going for and then fill in. I'm not too meticulous about it or crazy. Maybe that's why I like the powder so much because with the pencil, you kind of just have to draw each hair on, but most of the time, I don't have the time for that. And once I get the color on, I'll flip it around and use the spoolie and comb the color through just so it's not as blunt just to make sure everything looks clean. So the last thing I'm gonna do for the eyes is mascara, and I'm going to use the Collab Pink Mascara. Ignore the concealer on it. <laughs> and I'm gonna quickly curl my eyelashes. All right, I'm gonna speed through doing my mascara. All right, so this is the finished professional look that I created using the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Volume 2 palette. I am going to set my face with some setting spray so that your look stays all work day long. So good. I really just wanted to create this channel and start off with this video particularly using such a bold palette to create a bold look because if you like minimal makeup, then go ahead, throw on some mascara, throw on a BB cream, throw on some blush, 
that can be beautiful as well. But if you're someone like me who truly likes bold looks, glitter, crazy highlight, I would urge you to do that. Express yourself. Don't shy away from wearing it just because you feel like you shouldn't wear something like that in a professional field. That's my whole point. I think everyone should be able to have fun with makeup, regardless of your job. I just wanna break all that down. And at the end of the day, if you like being an artist and you like expressing yourself, even if you're wearing purple on your eye with glitter and a highlight on your cheek that is so blinding, your coworkers will go blind, do it, do it, do it. That is what I stand for. And I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video and hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more and I'll see you next time. Bye.